Hi, my name is Wayne Squires, President and CEO of Orion Drilling. It's my pleasure to be the first to welcome you to our family. Orion was formed in 2003. We believe the combination of high quality, professional employees coupled with some of the industry's most advanced technologies would be a formula for success. We were right. Today we have several operational facilities across the country, hundreds of employees, and are poised for even more growth in the future. Whether you're in the office or in the field, every employee has a direct impact on the success of our organization. And at Orion, we believe in promoting from within the organization. So if you're looking to move up within the ranks, then you're definitely in the right place. The training video you're about to watch will give you a brief overview of our field operations and HSC program, otherwise known as our Infinity program. Pay close attention as the information in this video is intended to educate and prevent hazardous or near-miss incidents from occurring. Please enjoy this video and feel free to ask questions once it has concluded. Upon arriving at the rig location, all new employees must meet with the rig manager who will discuss with the new employee what to expect the first few days as an Orion short service employee. All employees and visitors to the rig location are required to wear personal protective equipment. At a minimum, this includes steel-toed boots, safety glasses, and fire-resistant clothing. And be sure not to wear sunglasses at night. Specialized PPE is required for certain tasks. Consult your rig manager or an Orion safety representative with more details on specific PPE. Once you have met with your rig manager and are ready to start working on the rig, your next stop is the meeting house. Before every tower, Orion employees have a pre-tower safety meeting to discuss potential hazards of the day, such as unique tasks, weather conditions, and third-party operations. An essential tool to working safe is understanding and identifying work hazards. At Orion Drilling, we require that all work be properly risk assessed prior to the start of any work. A job safety analysis, or JSA, must be developed, reviewed, and agreed by all affected personnel and must be approved by an Orion supervisor. The JSA must be reviewed at the work site where the work will take place. If a change occurs during the course of work, all work shall be stopped, reassessed, and changes agreed to by all prior to the restart of work. Another way to remember this is change equals stop. The JSA process, when utilized as part of a pre-job safety meeting, is a valuable tool in Orion's accident prevention program. A key component in accident prevention is identifying the behaviors that can lead to unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. At Orion Drilling, we utilize a behavior-based safety observation card, or SOC, as a tool to document acts and conditions that may lead to accidents or injuries. Every Orion employee is required to participate in the SOC program. SOC cards shall be turned into your supervisor and ultimately shall be reviewed in all pre-job safety meetings. The meeting house has a recreational area, a locker room, and the right to know station. Pre-tower safety meetings include the infinity moment, a time where we review industry events and near misses. In the meeting room, you will notice the Why We Work Safe bulletin board. Orion employees are encouraged to post pictures of things that are important to them on this bulletin board. Family, friends, hobbies, the reasons they work. Our goal is to constantly remind employees that they have much to look forward to outside of work. And their health and safety is essential in providing for the needs of those who depend on them and is essential to living a fulfilling life. Employees are encouraged to stay on location in our designated crew quarters. Each crew quarter is equipped with a satellite television, refrigerator, full kitchen, bathroom, washer, dryer, and bunk rooms. Employees are responsible for maintaining the appearance and cleanliness of their crew quarter. Before we tour the rig, let's take a look at the overall layout and some safety precautions already in place. Multiple fire extinguishers are strategically placed throughout the rig to be used in the event of an emergency. Here is where they are located. 
If you hear a single sustained blow from the driller's foghorn, it means the rig is in a well control situation. A well control situation, such as a kick or underground blowout, can happen during almost any phase of drilling a well. Although they are uncommon, well control situations do occur and employees should understand their role to mitigate any potential hazards. Please take a look at the map as we identify where each employee should go. The driller will manage personnel and supervise well control from the rig floor. The derrick man should go to the shaker skid above the trip tank. He will be monitoring the shakers for flow. The motor man will go to the accumulator or kumi station. He will be responsible for closing the blowout preventer when instructed by the driller. The lead floor hand will man the choke manifold. He will receive instructions from the rig manager or driller on which valves to close and open. If you are working on a crew with an extra floor hand, they will stand next to the driller's cabin and await instruction from the driller or rig manager. Employees should not return to normal operations until the well control situation has been declared clear by both the rig manager and company representative. Smoking is not allowed on the rig at any time due to fire hazard. Here are the designated smoking areas on location. The emergency escape line is located on the monkey board and is attached to the location on ground level. This tool is to be used by the derrick man in emergency situations only. Make sure that the load path is clear of personnel and equipment at all times. This is the catwalk buffer zone. Do not enter the red zone while the machine is in operation. If you need to enter, wait until the machine has ceased operation and all crew members have been alerted you will be in the red zone. One exception to working inside the red buffer zones is operating the catwalk from the manual controlled manifold located on the ground level at the rear of the catwalk. Approval is required by the operation superintendent prior to manual operation. Now that you have an overview of the rig, let's begin our tour. The parts house is where many of the rig's spare components and maintenance tools are kept. It is critical to the success of the rig that this area is kept orderly. Paints must be stored in the flammable storage locker at all times. Storage bins are available for each crew to store and lock up their tools. In addition to the safety signage in the parts house, be sure to use extra caution when using tools such as the vise or grinder. Remember the parts house is not climate controlled and can be one of the warmest areas on the rig. The diesel tank is used to provide fuel to the drilling rig. The storage basket on the side of the diesel tank holds hoses and other tubular products for use on the rig. Containment ditches are built to keep any hazardous materials from escaping the area. If at any time you see a chemical spill, first alert a supervisor and await instructions. Remember, diesel is a hazardous liquid. If you get any diesel on your skin or clothes, immediately wash the chemical from your skin thoroughly and replace any clothing that may be saturated. If you have any questions about a chemical, refer to the MSDS sheet for specific cleaning guidelines. Remember, all MSDS sheets can be found at the Right to Know station. The mud hopper is the primary area for adding and mixing chemicals in the fluid system. When mixing chemicals, you must use the additional required personal protective equipment. Prior to mixing or handling chemicals, you must refer to the MSDS sheets for information on potential chemical, respiratory, or fire hazards. Additionally, the MSDS will recommend proper handling guidelines, required PPE, and first aid treatments. The generators and SCR, or VFD, are used to convert fuel into electricity, which powers the drilling rig. The first thing you will notice about this area is the noise. It's very loud. Always wear hearing protection while working in or around this area. Also, as with any component on the rig, familiarize yourself with the various hazard signs in and around the work area. They serve as reminders of the hazards on the job. Some of the hazards to look out for are 
whip checks on airlines, oil leaks and electrical connections, make sure guards are on rotating equipment, and keep water away from electronics and motors. The lockout tagout station is located in the SCR house. The SCR has a controlled climate and may seem like a safe, comfortable environment to take a break and get away from the elements. This is not the case. The SCR has high levels of voltage traveling through the SCR and can actually be one of the most volatile areas on the rig. Adhere to the signage on high voltage areas, which will inform you where you are not to use the pressure washer. Also, lockout tagout must be performed prior to doing any maintenance on pumps. Make sure all rotating equipment is secured, such as the belt guards on motors and closed covers on pony rods. Whip checks must be secured on all relief lines and snub cables on all vibrating lines. The water tank holds a capacity of 475 barrels of water used for mixing mud and other operations. The hydraulic power unit, or HPU, provides flow and pressure to all the hydraulic systems on location. Adhere to signage on high voltage areas. In case of fire due to hydraulic leaks or otherwise, fire extinguishers are located on both ends of the skid. Signage also indicates equipment that will start without warning. Be extra careful walking on floor surfaces as hydraulic oil or oil-based mud might be present causing a slipping hazard. The trip tank holds a capacity of 106 barrels to be used while tripping pipe. Safety cables must be used to secure stairs leading from trip tank to rig floor. Stair setups may be different from rig to rig. The choke manifold is primarily used for well control situations. Drilling fluid or mud is a very important element of drilling a well. The main functions of drilling fluid include providing hydrostatic pressure to prevent formation fluids from entering the well bore, keeping the drill bit cool, and carrying drill cuttings to the surface. The mud tanks hold over 800 barrels of drilling fluid and are used to store and condition the mud being used to drill the well. There are many hazards that exist in this area of the rig, including multiple permit confined spaces, floor openings, and trip and slip hazards. Be aware of hazards when working with and around a caustic mixing area. In the rare event that you get caustic material on you, take immediate action as directed by the MSDS. The mud tanks are equipped with a safety shower and eye wash station should anyone ever need to use them. The shakers are used to separate cuttings such as sand and shale from liquids like drilling fluid. Hazards that exist in this area are heat generated from drilling fluid, trip and slip hazards on grating, and the noise. This skid also contains a degasser and desilter used to manage cuttings from the well. Use caution when in this area as these machines start automatically. The choke manifold is used to divert pressure from the well bore in well control situations. Some of the hazards associated with this area are high pressure lines and trip hazards. This area needs to be completely clear of all debris at all times. Direct access to this area is critical when combating downhole problems. Statistics show that more incidents have and will occur on the rig floor than anywhere else on location. There is a litany of potential hazards on this section of the rig. Employees work in tight spaces with heavy rotating equipment. Be aware of your surroundings. Always look up. Make sure to alert anyone on the rig floor of any personnel or equipment above you. Hazards that exist in this area of the rig are slips from slick surfaces, trips due to poor housekeeping, pinch points in rotating equipment, and dropped objects. Watch for danger zones such as the V-door and the catwalk trough path. Fall protection is required by anyone working on the derrick. Climb assist and lad safe need to be in good working order. The driller's cabin is one of the most technologically advanced areas on the rig. Upon entering, you will find touch screens, remote video monitoring, joystick controls, and much more. Although this may seem like a nice place to hang out, the driller needs to be free from any distractions while operating the rig. Time in this area needs to be kept to a minimum. In the event of an electrical fire, 
a CO2 fire extinguisher is located in the console. The substructure is the foundation of the drilling rig. A large amount of work is done on and around the substructure. Statistically, this is the second most hazardous part of the rig. A confined space permit is required to work in the cellar. Fall protection is to be used while working on the BOPs. Be mindful of high pressure lines and overhead hazards. The substructure is often caked in drilling fluid and cuttings coming from the well. As such, it is imperative that this area is kept clean and tidy to prevent slips and trips. The draw works is a major component in supporting the drilling rig. It is essentially the heart of the rig. It is used to hoist the blocks and drill string. Watch for rotating equipment. Lockout tagout is required on all work associated with this piece of equipment. Do not remove covers or guards without a permit to work. The accumulator, or kumi, is a vital piece of equipment that controls the BOPs during well control operations. This terminal is used to shut in and contain the well. This area is off limits unless employees are participating in a drill or are in an actual well control situation. There should never be any trash or debris in this area. The catwalk is used to lift pipe, casing, and other equipment to the rig floor. This piece of machinery is to be used by trained and authorized personnel only. Hazards that exist are crush and pinch points from raising arm and fall potential. No one is allowed inside the 30-foot buffer zone illustrated here except the person operating the catwalk from the manual control manifold located on the ground level. And remember, approval is required by the operations superintendent prior to manual operation. The pipe rack area is used for storing all the drill pipe and casing. Pipes should be chalked at all times to prevent incidents. Never walk on drill pipe or casing as this could cause a slip or serious injury. Also use caution to prevent pinching hands while rolling tubular. Let's review some key safety points. Remember, at a minimum, always wear a hard hat, safety glasses, work gloves, steel-toed shoes, boots, and fire-resistant clothing while working. Hearing protection is required in designated high noise level areas. 100% fall protection is required when working at heights above six feet and when a potential for a fall exists. Additional PPE is required when working with chemicals. Refer to the MSDS prior to mixing chemicals for information on chemical handling, exposure, known hazards, PPE requirements, and first aid. Remember to immediately wash your skin and remove clothing if you get exposed to a chemical and follow the MSDS for further guidance. Familiarize yourself with the fire extinguisher location plan. The driller will initiate a single sustained blast from the driller's foghorn for any well control emergency drill. Familiarize yourself with the well control procedure and personnel assignments. All flammables must be stored in the flammable storage locker at all times. If you see a chemical spill, alert your supervisor immediately and await instructions. Slips, trips, falls. Be careful on slick surfaces. Keep your area clean to prevent tripping. Pinch crush points. Remain alert. Be aware of your hand placement and body positioning and surroundings at all times to prevent from being caught in between heavy equipment, tubular handling, and rotating equipment. Orion believes in an incident and injury-free work environment and no job is so important that it can't be done safely. This belief is supported by our Infinity brand for safety which represents our never-ending commitment to safety for you, our customers, the community, and each other. Always do the right thing even when no one is looking. And finally, if something doesn't feel right, look right, or there are unanswered questions to safely complete a job task, you have the responsibility and the full support of Orion's leadership team to stop the job. Remember, if you ever see yourself or others in a hazardous situation, or if something just doesn't feel right, you have our support to always stop the job, because your safety always comes first.